Hey everyone, Google Stadia that we paid $130 for is not working, so we're going to take the controller apart while we wait for it to work. It's been the most frustrating product setup that we've given, been through in, the, in probably quite a while. And I guess we'll talk a little bit about that briefly in this video. This is mostly going to be a teardown, though, of the new Google Stadia controller, which we can fortunately, we have the time to take it apart because, again, the product that I paid $130 for isn't working. So let's get into it. We're going to take apart the controller today and uh, see how it's constructed, see if Google has at least a good handle on the hardware side of things. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Thermaltake Core P3. The Core P3 is one of the most versatile cases on the market. It includes wall mounting hardware if a showcase is what you're after, but it can also run as a standing or horizontal test bench, making it highly accessible for modifying and overclocking hardware. The case includes tempered glass and an open air layout for easy management and high visibility, offering a truly unique chassis for enthusiasts. Learn more at the link in the description below. We'll talk about the product not working things in a separate video, I guess, probably, probably more of a review. But basically you get, so first of all, it doesn't seem like it works with the organization accounts, meaning G Suite, which is a Gmail account with, for example, at gamersnexus.net instead of at gmail.com. But that's what it let me purchase the product on, but it doesn't look like it works with that account. So we made another one and we also didn't get the activation code. I guess it got lost in the digital mail. USPS missed its stop for me or something. So we don't have the activation code. It probably won't work anyway. I'd buy it again, except we won't get the activation code. And also you need a Google Pixel phone to download the app to register the product, even though you don't need the Google Pixel to use the product because you can play in Google Chrome or with the Chromecast. And we tried that too, by the way. But anyway, we don't have an activation code. It's all very frustrating. Let's take this apart. Maybe that'll help. Uh, first of all, there's no screws on the bottom. I guess we'll do a walk through the controller first. Left and right, two bumpers. Basically start and select, or the equivalents thereof anyway. Not quite sure what these do yet because it doesn't work. Stadia button. So do we just have to split it? I think we just have to split the plastic because there's no screws anywhere. So that means it's going to be clips, which means I'm going to need a shim, which isn't meant to be a mean comment. It's just a lot of these products, controllers and console products aren't particularly easy to take apart, although the Xbox was. They have some documentation. It says, safety and regulatory guide for Stadia controller. Do not attempt to repair your Stadia controller yourself. Disassembling the device may cause injury to you. Unauthorized repairs or modifications could result in permanent damage to the device and may affect your warranty coverage. Hmm. That's probably never off. It's probably listening. Oh, it's probably a microphone. I bet that's what it is. Google. Google. Computer. How quaint. But if you scratch over it, you can't feel any holes. I guess there's probably something in there, though. It's like hard plastic, right? Yeah. Use a heat gun. Can you see that bubbling effect? This might be successful. Oh yeah, there we go. They don't make that easy. Okay, so I tried to do the ex sort of like experienced way of just feel, <laughs> way of just, it's kind of hot, feeling through the plastic. And I didn't feel any holes, but that's because it's like hard plastic. Uh, and then there's glue on the bottom. So we'll clean that up. There it is. A single screw. Looks like it's TR9. Torx 9 is the size. We've taken apart a good amount of controllers actually in the last two years, and I haven't had to use a heat gun on any of them. So that's new. Uh, normally they don't hide the screws because they're not trying to pretend they're Apple. They just let the screws be visible, which is really the best for everybody. Best for RMA, best for the user, but whatever. It's not super difficult to get the thing off and then I can just I can warp it back into its original self by heating it again if we need to 
But anyway, that's a Torx 9. Is it gonna just like fall apart now? Nope, it is not. Hmm. <laughs> that's the solution. Crush it open. I don't know. It's not strong enough and you know, you start sticking a flat head in there and you just scratch everything up. So I was trying yeah. to avoid that. Yeah, thank you. Oh man, <laughs> I did make it malleable. <laughs> the pry bar sunk into the plastic. I had to back off of it so we didn't like permanently just change the shape of the controller. I'm gonna let it harden a little bit. Much better. That's room temperature. Perfect. So to open the Google Stadia controller, you need a heat gun and liquid nitrogen. I might have actually cooled it too much. Do you like how we've melted? I don't know if that's like from the grease earlier from handling it or if it's actually just the plastic is now that color <laughs> melted off the coating. The fuck was that screw doing? It's like, it's even the point of the screw. Okay. Now we might be able to do something. Oh my God. Definitely this thing, I'd be shocked if it still works even right now with the amount of flex. Like we probably cracked PCBs and stuff. But I'm kind of at the point where I want to just rip it apart. I just like with a more aggressive tool. <laughs> I should file an RMA. <laughs> I mean, we could technically still return it. Uh, I thought maybe the codes were in here. I thought, like, <laughs> I thought the codes were in the controller. I don't know, I bought it for my grandson. Well, if I destroy it and get it open, then we can figure out how it was supposed to be disassembled. How's this not just exploding off right now? Making new seams. <laughs> uh. Oof, that's hot plastic. There's a wire. Nice. Got it. No, oh, mother. Jesus Christ. Oh. Okay, I found what was holding it together. Okay, so I was like, there has to be a better way to do this, and I'm sure we're just doing it wrong, and I thought we'd pull this apart and figure out how to do it, and then do it on the other controller properly to demonstrate that. But we have time constraints like scheduling constraints like crazy. So I decided, you know, let's just, let's just get this thing open and we'll figure out how it's assembled by destroying it and then we'll know for the next one. So I actually don't feel bad about doing that though. What we ended up doing, we just took a Dremel to the side. This is the expected Google authorized way to open your controller. I took a Dremel to the side of it. There's a ribbon cable, you have to be careful of that. I, I, <laughs> I think it actually still works. 
<laughs> I was still talking about it like it's a normal teardown. Like, oh yeah, just take the drum to the side. You have to be careful of the PCB. No, I, I think you're pretty much done at that point. But <laughs> anyway, I think it still works probably. I didn't clip anything that mattered. But anyway, the clips are massive. These are the clips. And the sad part is unlike better laptops, there's a lot of bad ones too, but unlike the good laptops, you can't really even get a small flathead in here, which this isn't, but you can't get a smaller one in here either. I broke those. And um, and get to this clip. You like Ideally what would happen is you'd kind of pry a little bit and look in and try and find where the clips are. And then you would go in with a flathead and try to depress the clip. Uh, but even when it's exposed, like I can barely, I can barely move that thing when I have full leverage on it. So I don't know. There's maybe there's a better way, but I'm not convinced there is. And I definitely don't feel bad about cutting it open that way because it was just getting ridiculous. I, I kept thinking there has to be a hidden screw somewhere. There has to be. It's like I was looking at the inside and I could see what I thought was an arrow on the rumble pack, but actually it was just a scratch. And I thought maybe there's like something inside where you have to like insert a screwdriver and turn it the right direction to move some plastic lever out of the way. Nope, it's just massive clips all the way around and it does not slide. So Patrick had a great point of all this stuff is, these are attached there, but the buttons are attached to the top. So like it would have been smart if Google just had it. So you release the screw from the underside and then you could just like, maybe if they attach these up top, you slide it off or otherwise just maybe clips that aren't quite so insane. That was way uncalled for. Google's got NVIDIA beat on um, over complicating their assembly. At least NVIDIA's products, even though they were insane and had 80 screws and glue, I was able to non-destructively disassemble them and get them back together. And you like, for the most part, you can't really tell other than the faceplate's missing on one of them, but otherwise they're fine. So whatever. Anyway, let's look at it. Okay. So if you want your own mod mat, like the one I'm working on that has protected our table from now 500 plus degrees Fahrenheit of heat, liquid nitrogen, and uh, to some extent a Dremel, you can go to store.gamersaccess.net and pick one up. We make these and we have them in stock and shipping. Those are on the store. We also have a smaller version if you want to, if you don't have as much table space. Well, that was easy enough. So that's so damn hard, Google. This is starting to look like every other controller I've ever disassembled now. So you have some carbon contact pads. And there's your switches, your buttons. Uh, carbon contact, I think, is what these are. I'm not 100% positive on that. These are just standard switches that depress. And then there's our single LED on the device right there underneath. The, uh, I keep going for flatheads, but they're all, I have a flathead graveyard right now. These are pretty simple. Same as the Nintendo Switch and everything else. Just got four hooks in it. This one actually annoyingly doesn't look like it forces alignment. The Switch does a really good job of that. Okay, go back. I'm not ready yet. The Switch has a keen on its plastic. Uh, yeah, there you go. It has a keen that only allows them to orient one direction, which is really a nice touch actually, but this does not have that. So Google probably just lets their, uh, it's really, it's for the factory workers, it's not for customers. It's so that they can assemble things properly and quickly. All right, there's your X, Y, A, B or whatever they call it. Oh, they, they use the same names. Okay, I take it back. I think that one is actually keyed, that's good. Yeah, it's all the same. This is all just rubber. Rubber and ABS plastic for the shell, which actually, if you question that, is that's how I know. It says ABS on it. Uh, I've got an F62 on the down here. I don't know what that means yet. I don't know why I'm bothering to put this back together like this. 
So that's... I'm not going to use it later. I wasn't planning on using it. Google's not going to let me use it anyway. Service doesn't work. Uh, okay, serial number. This thing's kind of interesting. Let's look at this. D-pad. Yeah. How does this work? Oh, I see. Okay. Got it. So this goes on something like that. And then when you push on the D-pad, it's going to use this lever, this plastic lever at the end of that to push down on this. Yes, yeah, so this this ribbon cable is going to be for for input transfer from these buttons and power for the LED back into the main board and the and probably a power board or at least power delivery. And we've got some numbers on the top, but they don't mean anything to me. I don't. It's not like a part number or anything. It's probably just manufacturing stamps. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Okay, back to TR nine. I like how they're like, you know what, let's use Torx because that's a common way to try and prevent consumers from going any further is Torx. As if a customer could get this far to begin with. So Andrew is asking off camera what this frame is for, and I'm not sure yet, but I think it's probably just structural support and uh, rigidity for the button presses, but we'll find out. Okay, we've got a cable connected in the bottom. It's a PCB in the bottom. It is a socketed cable. That's kind of nice. I don't know why that's where they decided to make it modular. Seems like an odd spot. Uh, these should just fall away. That's how they're normally held in on these controllers. We took apart the PS Classic and the an old PS1 controller, I think. We did a... Uh, all non-destructively, mind you. We did the Nintendo Switch. That was kind of a nightmare the first time we did it, but it wasn't bad the second time. Pretty easy. Took apart the Super Boy SFC. That wasn't super easy, but also non-destructive. So there's your sprains. Just a we've got the left and right buttons here hooked up with a sprain, sprain tensioned, and that should hit a button that I may have already disconnected. These bumpers have contact pads up top, and those will contact with these right here. So the bumpers will move in and hit this switch. So that's just a switch, not like a carbon contact or anything, standard button. So the original screw was here, and that would have come through this housing on the bottom part of the chassis. There's a button right there. Come through that housing and uh, and then passed up into this. And did it secure to the top? Doesn't look like it, no. So that just screwed into this chassis. Let's get these off. So there's your analog sticks. If you're curious about how those work, there's what it looks like inside. It's got what looks like just like a little plastic catch on either side to return to position and guide. And then it's a ball joint for the movement. And it snaps back to position. Let's disconnect these. These are power cables. Black and red's going to be power to the rumble packs, which right here is an old, old invention. Should just be a electromagnet. <clears throat> it's just a big electromagnet. It might be glued in there though. I think they actually are glued in there. Oh yeah, those are glued. These are actually held in by glue. <laughs> it's kind of whatever. At this point, at this point, it's not like anything they do is going to be better than what we dealt with. But there's the glue. Uh, to be fair, this is a, the only moving part in the device, so. Having a bit more security seems okay. I'm actually not not too mad about that one. You can feel the force though. Yes, gotcha. So you have to, to release this, you have to first push the board that way. You can see this locks. This one's wider. 
So you push it that way to release tension on this, and then you squish that. Now I should be able to get the other side. So why is this here? Well, I don't have an answer for that. It looks like, because to uh, Andrew's earlier point, more standard controllers, modern controllers, have the rigidity without needing a, an undercarriage. But this uh, seems to be used to just hold everything in place, I guess. I don't know. They didn't want to use screws. Maybe that's what it is. They didn't want to use screws in the body of the controller that were vis visible uh, externally. So they used them internally to hold it all together into this. And uh, so the controller in the middle, we could pop that housing off we really felt like it, I guess. For the parts, if anyone wants this just for future reference, I'll note them if some repair person out there wants to torture themselves opening these and repairing controllers. The uh, module on the left over here, I, haven't, I could look up the data sheets for these, I guess, but I'm kind of done with this controller. This is an MIMXRT1061. Next to that, AJ1923. Bottom of the controller, that looks like a battery. Oh, God. So if you ever need to replace the battery on your controller, the solution is that's how you replace the battery. Because actually getting to this really sucked. It, I don't know. Maybe there'll be an easier way on like later models or something. See what kind of battery it is, at least. What's that? Is that? Uh, it's glue. There's hot glue down there. So hot glue holding the cable, and you pull it out, and then what is the battery? Well, I can tell you, but they covered it up. GLIB18. Let's get this pad off so we can see the voltage and the amps. Not too bad. You could actually put that back if you wanted to, but I don't. And it is 3.8 volts, 2,000 milliamp hours, 7.6 watt hours. That's going to be your replacement if you want to, if you want to uh, replace the battery in your controller if it dies later, a couple years from now or something. There's one more small PCB down here. So that corresponds to that thing. That's got to be a mic. I'm thinking that's a mic. So um, the Google. Uh, Assistant or whatever that stupid thing is, the spyware, that's going to be located down here, it looks like. Uh, your, your controller sucks. OK, I think that should get back to them. They'll find a way. Oh, my phone's in my pocket. They already heard that. OK, that's it. That's the teardown of the Google Stadia controller. Well. We've torn down controllers before, taken apart quite a lot of things, like like hundreds in the last probably two years of different things, including some of the most complex video cards we've worked with, like the uh, colorful Kudan. That was a difficult one. The RTX 2060 was a difficult one. None of the, like, the Switch was kind of a challenge, but not that bad. The Switch controller was obnoxious to put back together, but not that bad. It was non-destructive. Everything worked afterwards. This might still work. I just don't care. Is that a difference? I just, I just don't care if it does. Uh, yeah, it is not easy to, ours was not easy to take apart, I'll say that. And what we've learned here, you have to remember, there were no instructions for this. There were no other videos of this. We were the first ones in terms of like, in our own world, that maybe someone else has already taken one apart, but they haven't published anything. So. I was working in isolation on this, and I think what I'd take away from it is it's the top that has the clips on it. What did you call them? Monster clips? Top that has monster clips on them, on it. And it seems like the trick would be to try to line your screwdriver up with a picture of it, like, like that, and then just try and get in there and hit them. But the problem is you're going to scratch the hell and chip the hell out of the, the outside. And then even if you push one of these in, which I was able to do with this, right? Like pretty early on, we were able to offset this up before we started destroying things. And that's because it's here alone. 
but over on this side, there's two immediately next to it. So you're going to need maybe another person and you'll have to get something in to pry this one and then to, at least to pry this one. And probably you'll need a second person to hit that third one to pop it off the side. You can maybe do it yourself if you've got uh, enough really skinny tools to work with on it. And then you're going to have to do that again on the right side. And it was just easier to use a Dremel. So, and it'll still go back together. I'll just use some tape or something. That's going to be it for this one. Hopefully, we can actually do some content on Stadia itself. I have another controller. Don't worry. Uh, we will be using the other controller for that testing. But that's assuming we can get the, the product to actually work. We'll see. Waiting on the access code. It was uh, $130. And, and also, Google allowed me to register with an account that it seems like it shouldn't have. So it, was, it allowed me to spend money on an account that can't register with the product because it's a G Suite account, which is owned by Google. But <laughs> you might be confused. Gmail is definitely not also a Google product. Even though G Suite uses Gmail as a foundation, Google doesn't seem to want G Suite users. Whatever. We're gonna, we made a different account for it. So we'll see. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to grab a mod mat like this one. In the very least, this video has proven that it can withstand quite a few different tools. And you go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help out directly. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.